looking at it today. You're not looking at it from when you get that card back, and so many people get lost in that. What's up, what's up everybody? This is Jamil from the Mealy Pop Shop with episode nine of Mealy Stocks. That's right, baby, Mealy Stocks episode nine. I am so excited to keep doing this and uh, we have a really fun uh, topic today which I can't wait to get in with you. If you don't know, we are Mealy Stocks, part of the Slab Stocks Network, local card shop partnering with Slab Stocks and we hope to give you some fresh insight and some really cool kind of just reports on different things going on in the hobby world especially from the card shop owner perspective. So let's get into this episode. And as we get uh, prepped, I want to show you one cool thing I'm doing with our shop. We have this thing called Mealy Pops Madness. If you haven't heard of it, it's on our Instagram account, Shop Mealy Pops. It's about a two hour, two and a half hour live card sale. And we don't sit there and go one by one and draw things out and dance around and, and give you all the extraneous stuff. We get right to it. We sell cards like crazy, low end to super high end. You can buy five, ten, fifteen dollar cards and you can buy ten, twenty five thousand dollar cards. So it's wild. Come check us out. It is going to be this Saturday for episode or session number twenty six at nine PM Eastern Standard Time on our Instagram live. Don't miss that first hour. So come check us out. Let's get into this episode. And I uh, I titled this episode Grading Questions Answered. And what I mean by that is as a card shop owner, um grading is something that has taken the world really by storm with the new influx of people that have got into cards really in the last two years. And so um, I get questions on the daily, probably 10 different, 10 different questions from all of our different platforms and in the store, whether it be in store, whether it be through our social media platforms, phone calls, we get questions all the time about this. So I thought, um, why not answer maybe the top four questions that I'm getting and give you guys maybe some insight on it that's a little different than maybe what you hear on some of the podcasts, maybe it's a little different than what you hear from people who don't own a shop. So let's do that. And I'm gonna, the questions might seem a little bit basic, but I think what I'm gonna go into with the details might help you guys out uh, in the grading world. And um, just from my background with it, um, I've graded with Beckett and um, SGC and PSA now for probably the last 10 to 15 years. And there's just been a lot of things and changes that I've been able to watch really specifically grading standards, which is something that people aren't paying attention to, but really been involved with it for the last, like I said, 10, 15 years with grading cards. So why don't we just get into it? The top question that I have, um, the first question that I have that I think a lot of you probably um, have asked or have thought about is who should I grade with? And um, that is a question that I think um, a lot of people would probably be slanted on one way in the card market and where we're at today, but I want to, I'd rather talk probably about each of the four major card graders and what they kind of offer, and then I can tell you what we do. So before I get into all of this, uh, each each uh, each question that I'm going to answer, I do think it's important that you realize that we do have a preferred account with PSA. Um, we have a group rates that we submit with BGS. We've been doing this for some time, <clears throat> but our shop, just so you know, I don't want to get inundated with this after this episode. We really only grade for our local customers and the people who break with us. It's just too much for us. To keep up with and I always push people to those group submitters out there there are a lot of people out there who only do grading and they do group submitters uh, I'm not gonna go and plug people right now because um, there's so many of them but I'm sure you know it if we can help you out with finding those people feel free to contact us but who should I grade with question uh, number one so um, as you guys know there's four main companies that I think are in the market right now PSA um, BGS CGC and SGC um, you might be surprised that I put CGC higher than SGC on that if you're tiering it. Um, and I think that's because CGC is up and coming, but like, I'll get to them in a second. So PSA, uh, located in Southern California, main draw with PSA is you're getting the highest return for your value with PSA. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no uh, asterisk there. When you get a PSA 10 gem mint card, you're usually getting the highest return. Now you could argue that a BGS 10 black label or BGS 10 pristine um, would get you a higher, but with PSA, I would say that's probably the best starting point is to grade with them. BGS Beckett, obviously on, out in Texas, they uh, they do a great job. Good people there. Um, very slow on the return times as well as PSA right now, as many of you guys know. Uh, what I'm noticing though with BGS in the market, so for those of you who just want to know the the transparency, is that BGS uh, cards are not selling comparable to PSA cards. A 9.5 Gemin, and in some cases now BGS tens are selling at the same price or below 
PSA 10s in some some examples. A 9.5 is definitely not selling what a PSA 10 is selling for because that is the Gemmit uh, criterion, right? So um, you just can't compare modern card values and vintage card values and even some gaming values, although Magic, I think, has its place with Beckett. Pokemon is kind of getting there. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is kind of getting there to a little bit more equal, uh, equal valuation. Um, but they just don't compare. And as many of you know that, that's why it is. So that's why I do tell people to gray with PSA. And just so you know, I don't have a plug with any of these companies. I'm not bashing or highlighting any of them. I'm just being honest. I think that's what you guys need to hear is raw honesty when it comes to grading. So I think they're all good people. They're companies that are trying to do the best they can. It seems so. But um, PSA, I would say, has the highest return value out of the four. CGC, if you don't know who they are, they're out of Sarasota, I think, down south in Florida here. We shoot down I-75. And they are uh, interesting because they're brand new to the card grading world. And they, um, a lot of people don't know, CGC, you know, they are NGC uh, coin grading and CGC um, comic grading. So as I say that, I think that's very important to understand. They have a background and a reputation that very, uh, that, 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 that translate very well to um, just kind of collectors in general. So the reputation is there. Um, and I think what I'm noticing is that they are up and coming with gaming cards. They really are. I'm starting to see Pokemon, uh, and, and I'm starting to see their turnaround times be pretty uh, normal and, 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 and reputable. So uh, CGC is something to keep an eye on. And then lastly, SGC, which is down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. we got a bunch in Florida here, huh? Um, they definitely have a role with vintage. I think they've done a great job with, you know, you see tobacco cards and vintage cards graded by SGC. Uh, definitely a higher value retention than Beckett. Um, but I think with modern, they have the worst comparison uh, with modern valuations. Um, I would say CGC and SGC are the worst. Um, just being raw, I'm not telling, just calling it like it is, okay? So um, that's hopefully answers that question with grading. Hopefully you guys can take a little bit about that from there. I think there's pros and cons to each one of them. There's also submission criteria and submission levels with each three of them. But those are the, the, the I, would, I would rank, you know, if, if you're paying attention there, PSA probably being number one for modern. Uh, PSA and uh, SGC being number two for vintage. Um, Beckett, you know, the one thing that I didn't mention is Beckett is the is the one of the one of the four uh, along with CGC that does subgrades, and I think that's important because I think a lot of people like to grade their cards, you know, when it comes to subgrades to see what a card actually grades out as. Now, let me take it back. Let me take a step back. As I gave you those ratings and my my heart on grading and, and why you should grade with who or who you should grade with, that's based on value. That's not based on preference or that's not based on collectability. So. Don't feel like you can't grade with any of them. I think mean, all four of them offer something very different. So as you grade with all four of them, all right. Second question. Let's get into some more uh, uh, nitty gritty here. So should I grade this card? Here's a card I have. What do you think about it? Should I grade it? Da da da. What that usually means for Jamil is, uh, Jamil, can you inspect this card and do a review and, and do it for free? <laughs> That's what I get a lot from people, and I'm happy to help people, especially new people in the hobby. Uh, we have a whole review thing that we charge for in the store. It's a lot of time to truly review a card. Um, but here's what I want to say to answer that question in, in regarding should I grade this card? Should I grade this card? Number one, first thing, stop quoting 10 values. Hear me out. Every single person that I talk to now believes that every pack pool card and every uh, thing that they're getting is a 10. It doesn't work that way, people. It does not work that way. First off, if you're grading thick cards, it's a you're getting tens is like a unicorn on thick cards. Um, when you're grading cards that aren't chrome, so cards that have maybe a a, a, a more glossy cardstock or a, a cardstock that's matte finished, not like the prisms and the and the selects and the optics and mosaics, um, you have issues with just how those edges come out. Uh, another thing with 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 um with looking at a card, should I grade it? Um, is is have you even looked at it? Right, a lot of people bring cards to me, they haven't even looked at the card themselves. So you're obviously looking for the four big things, centering, corners, surface, edges. You're looking at all those elements and you're trying to understand what to do with the card. I will say this, when people evaluate cards and as you're learning to grade your own cards and learning to give yourself some sort of understanding of what the card might grade out as, you, people always miss edges. They always miss edges. Edges are very important. You have to really look at the four borders of a card and really pay attention to what's going on on the edges of a card and secondarily, um, I don't know what it is, but a card that's centered is centered. Don't trick yourself into thinking that a card is centered. That happens all the time. Oh, the card looks great. The card's not centered, bro, or 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 gal. I mean, it's just not centered. You have to really look at that 
left to right, top to bottom. And then there's cards that have borderless centering. So you have to really study that, understanding that um, those elements are not going to bring you 10s. Um, I know everybody wants a 10. I know that's so important in the modern card market. But please understand that grading cards is not always going to give you a 10. I have so many people lost in that um, illusion. And what I, what I feel like happens is they trick themselves out to grading the card. And then it comes back a 9 or an 8.5, an 8, a 7. And they're like, well, what the heck? It's like, well, the card was never even, you know, you didn't even really look at it in the beginning. So, so really understanding when should I grade a card is, do I think it even has a chance at grading well? That's important. Look it over. Um, pay attention to the centering. Pay attention to the edges. I mean, most people look at corners and surfaces. That's important. That's easy to, easy to look at. Um, and then the second thing, uh, or last thing here is um, make sure you're looking at a card in different lights. Check it out in a dark light, a low light, understanding that the surface scratching, specifically on like prisms and refractors, doesn't always come up. So check out it on different lights. I think that's very important uh, as you're looking and evaluating your cards. All right, so for time's sake, let's keep this. We try and move through these. I know I'm a long wooded guy. I just have a lot of information to give you guys. So question number three, when will I get my cards back? Um, and I, I think this is actually a loaded question. I want to hopefully, hopefully you guys understand part of this. So um, we have different submission levels that we su submit at, 10 days with PSA, 20 days economy, uh, bulk, all these kind of different names. BGS has the 30 days, the 10 days, the two days, five days, all that stuff. Please understand that um, grading is taking a lot of time right now, okay? Um, COVID has really put a strain on these companies. Um, I have noticed with PSA, they're trying to hire more people, but they're also in California, and they've had to deal with fires in the past few weeks. So, I mean, just 2020, right? We all know what hasn't happened in 2020 for folks. But um, card returns and how long it takes to get a card back is one of the most important things you have to understand. And here's why. I, I call it lost potential. And it's just a basic understanding, but if you're grading a card, looking at an eBay value, a PSA 10, a PSA 9, a PSA 8, whatever, BGS 9.5, BGS 9, SGC, whatever you're looking at, you're looking at it today. You're not looking at it from when you get that card back. And so many people get lost in that, especially on new releases, right? Uh, new releases, let's for, say, for example, Prism. Prism's going to come out with football very soon. The very first PSA 10s and BGS 9.5s of those, you know, uh, Herberts and, and, and uh, Burroughs and Tua, you know, are going to be a lot of money, but it's going to drop extremely quickly. Retail is going to come out two weeks probably after Hobby, right? Or a week after Hobby. And then those cards are already going to be behind on the process. And then people are going to pull them. They're going to look at PSA 10 values in maybe late December and think, oh, that's what this card's going to be. You have to understand the potential of sending it off, waiting for it, how much you pay. And then when you get it back, the card's probably going to be 50% of what that last comp of a PSA 9 or 10 is. So please get that, guys and gals. I think it's so important to understand lost potential with grading. Um, I will say this, 2021 is around the corner, and I believe, and I've been saying this now for six months to all our customers and all our platforms, in 2021, I got a pen, I've just been using it like crazy, let me throw it over there. In 2021, you're gonna see a one-year turnaround on bulk submissions. So whether it be the unguaranteed with BGS or whether it be the what they call the bulk or value with PSA, uh, I know many people have an 85-day, 65-day win in our shop. We're very thankful. We have a preferred account. We've been doing a ton of business with PSA. So we have what's called a 45-day window. The truth behind all that is those are all six months and eight months and 10 months. In 2021, those submissions are going to be a year, guys. They're going to be 12 months long. So can you imagine lost potential for something like basketball or football when you're not getting a card back for one year for 12 months? So really consider that. I think that's a lot of people have no idea when it comes to grading. You really are not going to get these cards back and have them. Uh, you cannot relate them to a market one year out. You can't even relate cards you know, in, in this day and age two weeks out, yet alone 12 months out. So please, please understand the lost potential. Um, you'll get your cards back when, when the grading finishes with it. You know, I've seen um, uh, inconsistency from all the grading companies where sometimes we've sent off let's say a 10 day order and a 20 day order and we've got the 20 day order back before the 10 day order or we've got a 20 day order back uh, that we sent two weeks ago in or three weeks ago in and the 20 day order from three months ago didn't come in. So you have to understand these things that these companies are inundated. There is no guarantee. So whoever you submit through is doing the best they can to get it back. We have zero control over it. So there's a lot of factors with grading, especially with a timetable and getting it back. And I know I'm long winded, so let's move to the last one. 
Uh, maybe we'll do a second part of this because I know this is such a loaded, loaded, loaded question. But number four, how do I make money grading? And I get this question a lot from new people. And I, and I think that the last three questions uh, will kind of highlight some elements there. But how do I make money grading? So first thing, if you're asking me this, please understand that I'm assuming you are a flipper or investor. I'm not assuming you as a collector because most true collectors aren't looking just to gain money. They're looking to build their collection, which I can I love both sides of it. Okay, but um, the economics are not that simple. Um, loss potential you have to factor in grading fees, which are a massive thing, right? So let's just say you believe the card is a ten. It's a uh, as a ten. It's a two hundred dollar card. You grade it, you submit it at a $40 window or whatever, and it comes back a nine. Now you've lost time, you've lost money, you've paid your grading fees, and you're now into the card more than what it's worth. So it's kind of like uh, buying a new car off the car lot in a lot of ways, where you drive it off and you immediately lose the value. So there's a lot of elements that with, with, with grading that I think is very important. And then um, the, other, uh, the other side of it, I've talked about a little bit before, before in this episode, is you're wishing upon a star, right? You, you believe that the card will grade this you're convinced that it will grade it and you've never crossed your mind that the card might get a nine or an 8.5 or an eight and a lot of the times when you rush grading and you send stuff off that you you're a little blinded to that happens so i mean i i don't have the answers to everything but i do think that some of these answers that i'm giving today are a guide to really helping people out there understanding grading um it, I'm really charged about grading because I think that there's so many people out there who are talking about grading and don't know what they're saying. They don't understand grading. They're giving bad advice. So please understand when you do this, you're really, I mean, if you're calling yourself a business and you're making money or you're calling yourself somebody who knows how to flip and buy cards, please be honest with yourself and pay attention to what you're doing because I, a lot of the times people are losing money with grading. Um, so I, I bring that all up so that you guys can pay attention a little bit more. Sorry if I seem a little uh, charged about this. It's just, it's just one of those topics that I get a lot of, a lot of questions about. So hopefully that answers a little bit. Um, I, I'm happy to do more of this. You know, Please feel free to comment, ask questions in the comment sections on YouTube and as we post these on different platforms. Um, but I just wanna say, that, man, it's awesome to see you guys out there. The car world is on fire. Uh, some new releases to look forward to. We actually have Illusions um, uh, football being released tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Um, or sorry, not today. I don't know what day it is anymore, but it's Wednesday of this week. And then also next week, I believe Upper Deck Series 1 Hockey is coming out. That's a massive release for you hockey and Upper Deck fans out there. And the week after that, I think, is Topps Chrome Black Baseball. There's a lot of cool things coming out. Immaculate Basketball next week. So keep your eyes out. Be talking a lot more about this. Pokemon Vivid Voltage just releases on Friday this week. And just got a ton of different things to cover. I'm very excited to see the car world. You guys be safe out there. And please subscribe, click, follow Muley Pops on YouTube, follow Slab Stocks on YouTube and all the other platforms that we have. Appreciate you guys. Check out MuleyPops.com and have a great day. Later!